Scratch is a programming language specifically designed for teaching kids to code. This unfortunately means you can't count on Scratch to be as good as other programming languages. Scratch is extremely tedious to work in it. There is no organization, it's slow in every aspect, and most importantly, there is no stretch block. Scratch team, please add stretch block. These reasons made majority of people to switch to alternative platforms such as Unity or Godot. But wait, why did I stay then? What is the thing which made me spend so much time on some obscure educational tool for kids? Let me quickly explain why I use Scratch. First, Scratch is not only a programming language, it's a social network. Yes, the same way YouTube is one, except you can't earn money from it. Then what is the point? Branding. On Scratch you can gain followers, but not just as some imaginary number, but as real people which actually care about your content. Just imagine how hard it would be getting a thousand followers on other game publishing sites like each year or Steam, while on Scratch you can get those in matter of weeks. Having group of people passionate about your content is extremely important for content creator. They will provide you valuable feedback and help promote your projects to other people. And Scratch is immensely grateful, especially because you practically have no competition. Like, come on, you're competing with a bunch of 9 year old kids. Of course you can get popular easy, as long as you try. Second, limits. Working in Scratch is slow. Scratch itself is slow. And it lacks many features, like stretch block. But how in the world is that a good thing? As some guy once said, The difference between stupidity and genius is that genius has its limits. But seriously, there are a ton of reasons. First, limits encourages your creativity and drive you to push boundaries. You learn to value every single aspect of your game, from design to performance, thus becoming a more skilled game designer and developer. But of course, I wasn't thinking about that when I started my Scratch journey. My beginnings were humble, creating same generic projects everybody was creating, including Tangram, Explain, and Doge Clica. The most notable projects I made at the time were The Sandbox, a remake of a popular Flash game where you observe how elements interact with each other. Next was Jump High, an idle game where you collect coins falling from the sky, and then you use those coins to buy jumping upgrades. The goal is to reach the space. It was my best game at the time. And then something unbelievable happened. I got a comment which will change everything. Project got created. For you non scratches. This basically means my project is going to be on front page in curated project section. And as a result, the project received over 10,000 views. This achievement left a significant impact on me and I began to see the true potential of Scratch. I always dreamed of creating a tower defense game, specifically clone of famous Bloons tower defense. And I had a ton, and when I said ton, I really mean a ton of attempts. My closest attempt was this project, in which I had a lot of things working, kind of. At that time, I was still using clones, it's no wonder why I didn't manage to finish it. After so much time spent on this, I was disappointed. Disappointed in my game dev skills. Disappointed in my attempts to try to create a tower defense game. Disappointed in Scratch. Naturally, I was discouraged primarily with Scratch in capability, so I decided to switch to unity. 
I spent 3 years working in Unity, during which I made an abundance of games. One of them was Box City, a puzzle game where you command people on construction sites to push boxes and climb ladders. But soon I realized something really important. This game was the most boring game in the world. The animations last forever and you lose will to play in first 10 seconds. I knew this idea was trash and I threw it where it belongs. Then a stroke of genius struck me. You are turret and shoot bugs. Okay, yes, it was much more complex than that. But the point is that I spent whole year creating this genius game and then something unbelievable happened. I got 10 views? 10 views for one year of work? Are you kidding me? I wasn't really expecting much, maybe 1000. And I got less views than some generic game on Scratch. Then I realized two things. First, I'm terrible game designer. Second, I'm terrible game advertiser. Looks like having superior engine is nothing if you aren't possessing the right skills. So, I decided to give Scratch another chance. There, at least someone played my game. Oh, what a brilliant choice that was. With my new game dev skills, I learned using Unity. I finally managed to create a remake of Blonde Tower Defense game in Scratch. Finally, my dream came true and I even got over 100,000 views on this project. I became highly motivated by this success. Therefore, I decided to make a cloud multiplayer game. For you non-scratchers, cloud multiplayer game is basically a game where you can play with other people on internet in real time. And in year 2019, I created, inspired by the game with same name, Cursors IO. Unlike the original game, where the most selfish people win, I based my game on collaboration. People really liked it and again, I got over 100,000 views. This is all cool and everything, but I wanted to go even further. I wanted to push the Scratch to its limits. I want to create the very best project on Scratch. At the same time, I always wanted to create 3D projects in Scratch. My determination was unmeasurable. First, I found a way to actually do 3D, as you can see in this game. With this knowledge, I decided to create a 3D platformer. And then by making each step of 3D engine from scratch, I finally managed to create it. And what would be the better 3D platformer to recreate than the most iconic one and only Crash Bandicoot? This project features low poly, <coughs> super low poly version of Crash Bandicoot with platformer physics and box mechanics. Although I tried to optimize as much I could, Scratch was still too slow to even run decimated version of Crash, and my optimization skills weren't much better. For that reason, I switched it to even more love poly, completely new player design, this guy. I added new features, collectibles, ice physics and moving platforms. The super important thing to mention is that this project uses 3D editor which I made for purpose of creating levels for this game. Thanks to the editor I was finally able to create full 3D game. And that game is the most significant mark I left on the Scratch. It is in top 50 favorite projects on Scratch with more than half million views. Crystal Seeker This game is huge. This is not just another 5 minutes game. This game have over 2 hours of gameplay and 9 levels with 3 boss fights. I have so much to be talking about this game, it deserves its own video. Oh, and in same engine, I made this. I made worse version of Reglitcher, the game I made in Unity back in 2019. And it got 6000 views. Imagine getting 600 times more views per worse version of your project. That's the power of Scratch. Popularity without advertising. Of course, I could get much more if I advertise it. Like I'm doing right now. 
Today video is sponsored by Reglacier, one of the smallest mobile book shooting games of 2019. And it's totally free. Currently almost 10 people have joined Reglacier over the last 4 years, and it's one of the most impressive games in its class with detailed models. Personal favorite is Electro Turret, as it can shoot lightning bolts. <coughs> Please don't play this. Anyway, after that, I haven't been focused on creating Namirio's smaller projects, like Scratchbot, a remake of mini game from PC1 game Crash Bash, and Percipi Neon, a 3D platformer I made in only two days and which got 70,000 views. Then I realized something. I like tower defense games and I like making 3D games in Scratch. So you can see where this is going. Exactly, 3D tower defense on Scratch. I started my most ambitious project so far, for which I can now easily say it's one of the best games I ever made in Scratch. Factoid TD 3D. This game. This game is something I believed I could never achieve, but I did it. I did the impossible. I made the best game on Scratch. The game I always desired to create. This game is big enough to deserve its own video, but I'll explain it briefly why is it so impressive. First, same as Crystal Seeker, this is a full game and not some show off demo. Thanks to its genre, replayability is very high, which means you can play this for hours and not get bored. Second, this is a 3D game and still running at the same speed on vanilla Scratch while the most 3D projects require Turbo Warp a Scratch mod to be playable. However, this is only one side of the coin. Really value of this game comes in its game design. It's taking the most out the game development skills I've acquired over many years. There is a lot of content here. 24 levels, various game modes, 10 tower types with each having 8 upgrades and even 64 enemy types. Overall, it's a very good game and I think of it as my masterpiece. But things can't ever be simple. The scratch algorithm meant to showcase projects glitched out due to frequent hacker attacks. So trending page, which displays the most popular projects, got stuck. At the same time I released the game. And from potential million views on this project I got less than 100,000. And I said to myself, it's time to stop. I will not let the luck promote games anymore. I'll take the stuff in my hands. I'll advertise my games with a plan. And then this very YouTube channel you're watching right now is born. So next time you watch my videos, never forget the gratitude. I'm no hacker which froze the trend. But this is only the top of iceberg. There are a lot of details I left for different videos. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the detailed version of my Scratch journey. As promised, next I will cover Crystal Seeker and Victoid TD 3D. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.